I'm walking on an old abandoned train bridge that holds some really significant history. And in just a short amount of time, this bridge is no longer gonna be abandoned. Today I'm coming to you from about 20 minutes outside of downtown Pittsburgh. I'm currently standing on what is known as the Great Allegheny Passage. This former rail line sits next to active rail lines. And the Great Allegheny Passage used to connect to a very interesting structure that sits just up here. This is known as the Cary Furnace Hot Metal Bridge. Today, we're gonna explore it. If you wanna learn more about it, all you need to do is come along with me. The Cary Furnace Hot Metal Bridge, also known as the Union Railroad Rankin Hot Metal Bridge Number no. 35, is a railroad truss bridge across the Monongahela River between Whitaker, Pennsylvania and Rankin, Pennsylvania. The bridge is out of service and it hasn't seen a train in nearly 40 years. It used to carry the Union Railroad out of Pittsburgh. Its design is a truss bridge constructed out of steel. The longest span is 483 feet, total of three piers, and it resides 50.8 feet above the ground. It opened in 1900 and the bridge was built to carry freight between Whitaker and the U.S. Steel Carry Furnace with the downstream line shielded for the use of hot metal trains. It opened on December 31, 1900 for the hot metal traffic and on the 14th of June 1901 for general traffic. It is currently owned by the Rivers of Steel National Heritage Area. The 178-acre Cary Blast Furnaces site straddles Swissvale and Rankin Burrows and is designated a National Historic Landmark in 2006, part of the Rivers of Steel National Heritage Area. The blast furnaces are the only non-operative ones left in the region. The hot metal moniker stems from the bridge's role in the steelworks heyday. After leaving the blast furnaces, molten iron was poured into torpedo cars that traveled by rail across the bridge and onto the next step in the steel making process. Allegheny County has committed more than $6 million to restore the bridge for pedestrians and cyclists, and doing so will connect the former industrial site to the region's major trail, the Great Allegheny Passage. Quite a bit of work is needed for the bridge to open the traffic because the bridge spans a waterway, and extra care will be needed to remove lead paint and asbestos during rehabilitation. And the bridge and trail connection is expected to be open sometime in 2024.
Starting off here on the former rail bed, just a bunch of stone and ballast and overgrown areas. But here you can see where the rails did still exist and continued outwards. This is where the bridge does begin. And as we saw in the aerial footage, it's a fork in the bridge. There's two lines that either enter or exit off this bridge. We're on a single section here. Left rail is still intact. Right rail has been ripped up. No ties, just steel plates that the rails were anchored to. By me walking in the middle, you can see how tall the sides are. And nearly all of it is constructed out of metal. Not a surprise, since it was servicing the carry furnace. Even the decking, I'm pretty sure, is primarily steel. And there were some rotted areas here and there, some openings. But for the most part, it is fairly intact. If you get a look off the side here and actually see some old bridge abutments where something was residing there. Maybe a platform or a dock. And there's the other bridge over there that forks into the truss bridge that we're heading, heading to right now. There's a bit of a gap here. I'm actually seeing directly beneath us is a metal grate platform. Not tall enough to walk on, but I guess maybe to crawl on. Maybe if they had to do inspections or something. And there were a few ties right here, but then it goes to metal again. So I'm not certain of the opening here. It does connect to this little platform here, which I'm not about to stand out on. There's not really a whole lot of support for that. And you can see some uh, wires connected there in a little junction box with a switch on it. Not sure if that would be for a signal rail switch and here's a look back where we just came from around that sweeping curve are you looking for a fun gift idea for someone that you know or maybe you want a personalized video that you get to keep forever if so click my cameo link down below in the description crossed over and noticing too that the rails no longer continue and that rail as i'm looking at it now is actually wedged downwards it's not completely flat Looks like it was hammered down. Some really heavy duty metal plates here. You can see where they actually, yeah, there was a switch here at some point. Tracks going in two, two different directions. Another opening here with the electrical box. And that is the Monongahela River beneath us there. I'm glad that I can't see through to the bottom because I don't think I'd be able to cross it. Even looking through that gives me, you know, the little butterflies, but this is a pretty solid bridge. Now, looking downwards, it does look like rail, but I don't believe that is. I think that is just metal that is part of the construction. But here you can see some plates with these little guides where the rails would have went. So there was a rail going off to the right and to the left. So there was a switch somewhere back there, which now does make sense where that opening is with the ties right there. There was probably a switch there, a handle. Well, I, I'm not sure if it would have been electrical, but there was definitely a switch there. So at least we confirm that. Coming out to the Y here, or the fork, where both bridges do divide going in this direction and join going in this direction. This is my first time ever seeing a bridge like this, let alone exploring one. So this is a rather unique opportunity. I guess you consider these girder bridges, I think. This one is 100% a truss bridge and this one is fairly impressive. It's a good length. 
as we've learned. And the rails on the left are still intact. The ones on the right, I believe, are ripped up. We will get confirmation of that. And again, there are some openings. So you definitely have to be vigilant of where you're walking. Yeah, you don't really want to fall through there. That is even daunting just looking down through there. Up here on the platform though and on the railings there are some more... I guess you want to call them controls. There's a, another box here. Looks like something would have been protruding out of there. More electrical stuff I believe. You can see the wires are cut here. The wiring doesn't look all that old. I guess it's what would would have been used in the last 40 years or so. Now if you look down, there's all these little, almost like little marbles or mini cannonballs. I believe that's the iron ore that the trains would have been carrying. They're like little cannonballs or pellets. Now on this bridge here, we do have a wooden deck. Nothing ran there, that is just for structural support. But this curves off to the left and meets up once again with the Great Allegheny Passage rail line. And here's a good visual from where we just crossed over. That's what we walked over. You can see the sides there. I'm guessing the sides like that, and I could be wrong, but First thing that comes to mind is if they were carrying the loaded cars across there, going around a curve, if anything was to spill over, that that would maybe catch any material, prevent it from dumping into the river. And it looks like there's some little platforms down there too with planks of wood on them. I'm not sure what those are for. Not even an easy way to get to them. There is a wire, or not a wire, like a, I guess it'd be a wire or a rod going across about halfway on that I-beam. Maybe for inspecting inspections or an inspector to clamp onto that with a harness. And then, <coughs> excuse me, get out to those platforms. Couldn't pay me enough to do that. But there's a ladder there. I'm guessing that's what it's for. So I'm not going to bother walking across this. Again, there's just dead ends over here. And we can pretty much see all of it from right here. Just a little tiny cutout right there on the right hand side with some railings. I am definitely more focused on this behemoth right here. Looking at this graffiti, I think this is one of the ghosts from Pac-Man. And I hear a train. Oh, look at that! There's a train crossing the bridge over there, CSX. That's a cool perspective. So we're standing on an abandoned train bridge, looking at an active train bridge. Roughly a few hundred yards apart from each other. And I was able to see it thanks to this little viewing window. There goes the CSX. Oh, look it. Look what we have approaching. A barge. It's going to go directly underneath us. And I believe that is carrying coal, if I'm not mistaken. It's like this was meant to be. <laughs> it's supposed to be here today at this time. We got trains, barges, rail and steel history. Looks like there may have been a, a light right there or a sensor of sorts that peers right through there. Looks like this opening is directly cut out for that.
and looks like there would have been or there is a platform on the right hand side like a manway or walkway which I'm not about to walk out onto I'll try to give you some visuals of it I'm going to stay where it's safe and solid when he gets a little bit closer I'll give you another glimpse at him but as we are approaching the bridge though we do have some connections here and I'm going to Put it out there that I, I'm not 100% certain these are either called frogs or diamonds. I think the diamonds are what interconnect these different ones. I think the frogs are what help keep the rails, the wheels on the rails. I think. I know there's people out there that know far better, far more than I do. So by all means, correct me if I am mistaken, but this might be a combination of frogs and diamonds. I think this might be a, a frog right here, I think, which helps guide the wheels to the appropriate track. But there's a lot going on here, just to switch from track to track, bridge to bridge, because, for example, if a train was coming down this bridge, it could either continue to the right, or it could continue down this way, off to that bridge, and vice versa for that one over there. So. A lot of activity in a small amount of space, so to speak. There was a fence here too, which is knocked down. And there goes the barge heaped with coal. Oh yeah, I'm not going out there. This is as close as I'm getting. But this is where the connection is for the manway walkway, which is severely rotted. I would not even want to step one foot out there. But instead of trains carrying the coal over this bridge, now there's barges pushing the coal under this bridge. Here's the switch too. So I don't see, um, maybe it was right there. It's yeah, it was mounted right there, the switch lever, or the switch arm. The bolts are protruding out. A little bit of a ladder here and a platform, which you could, I guess, scale down this side of it. And there is barge pushing through down the Monongahela. Now this is what I've been building up to. Crossing through this, as I call it, a behemoth of a bridge. The amount of steel work here is impressive, to say the least. Wow. And it's just a straight line. There's a divider wall separating the two tracks. Here's again either another light and or sensor. Got the inner catch rails, in case there was a derailment. And let's see if we could spot some dates here on the rails, which shouldn't be too hard because they're not buried. I'm actually having a harder time than I was imagining finding some dates on the rails. I did find some random numbers here or there, but nothing that correlated with date. No tally marks, no stamping where it was created. If I do find it though, I definitely will share it, but as of right now, I am kind of striking out. And just looking right here, here's a crossover platform. They go from one side to the next. Huh, okay. This is kind of throwing me for a loop. If this is here, no trains could come through this way. And there's no, uh, yeah, there's no rails, no ties, no nothing. I thought a train came through here because up there near that Manwig platform, which is on the other side right there, the rails did 
venture out toward this side and then they were cut off. I wonder if this was added sometime later. Maybe they discontinued that side, only this side stayed in operation and they added this as a connection. That's the only thing I could think of. But I was fairly confident that another line did come through here because as we saw at the beginning, which I'll show you once we get back there, there is a whole separate switch and side that goes towards this direction. They're just cut at the steps for the walking platform. I guess you could also dub this as an unofficial graffiti bridge. Sides are very colorful. I'm even seeing where people climb up on top of one of the beams up there and put some taggings. Even some of the rails have sayings, initials. This one says hideous song something 23 to infinity. Another location that comes to mind with this bridge is one that I crossed with Jake and RJ. I can't remember if that was maybe two years ago. And I believe that was over the Susquehanna River. I will link that video down below. Very similar to this one, minus the sides. And that was a large, long truss bridge as well. Let's see, there is another cutout there and steps here, but there is no catwalk. Same thing on this side, there is an opening and a lower platform down there. This is probably one of the supports that we're over right now, I'm guessing. You can see some of the old furnace remains over there. And we are nearing the end, this does not go completely through. There is a fence up here, but that is going to be changing very soon because in the future you're going to be able to walk or ride your bike across here. This is going to be a new addition slash expansion of the rail trail system. And it's fantastic that they are going to be utilizing a huge piece of history a bridge that was designed for servicing the carry furnace. It's gonna live on and have a whole new life. And this is where it comes to an end. Rails go right out to the end of the platform. Now we do have a big open field here. I believe back in the day, this was a big industrial site. You can even see over there too, the walking platform just goes out and drops off to nothing. Not as high above the ground here, obviously. It looks like a new business site being constructed right there. And looking back, that is where we just passed through. A very impressive site indeed. I'm going to make my way back to the other side as I'm going. I'm, going keep... I'm looking now. <laughs> Those rails that are protruding out, those are the inner uh, derailment rails, not the true rails. The true rails actually are cut up here. But as I was saying, I'm going to make my way to the other side. I'm going to search for some dates along the way. Hopefully I can find them. And at the very least, I will show you again where I believe tracks did go on the other side. Give you more visuals of that and see if there is anything else I missed along the way. All right, I did find some stampings. They're not the most easiest to read, but they are here. I do see like a one four over there, either P E or R E G O S something. And then I do see 1924 right there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight Italian marks. So 
maybe July or August 1924. I don't see the, uh, where it was created. I'm guessing it's probably these letters over here that I mentioned, but that might be maybe a 140 pound rail. I do see like a 140. I'm guessing somewhere in here is the manufacturer of it, but I just can't make it out. But I do see like I said, either a P or an R, an E, either a G or C, I'm guessing C for company, CO, and then an S, and then something else, and then the 1924. So, can't make heads or tails of that, but at least we know 1924, I'm almost certain these were created locally. I mean, we're just a stone's throw away from the Steel City. This is basically a suburb of Pittsburgh, so I would be shocked if these weren't created locally, but 1924, these were not necessarily placed here. That's when these rails were rolled and used up until the bridge became abandoned. Back on the other end now, and just to re-illustrate what I was explaining before, rails came through here at one time. They're still here. The ties are still here, but they terminate right there in front of us. So my only belief is that this was a double line bridge, and at one point they did discontinue this line, ripped it up, installed that catwalk over there, and just kept this side in service up until its final date of operation. Otherwise, this only would be like maybe just, it's not even long enough to be like a backup holding line or a switch. They only go to right here, so it's barely enough to even clear the switch. I don't know. I just found that rather interesting that they have a catwalk out there where rails would have came across. But certainly a really interesting sight, fascinating history, and knowing that it's going to live on in a whole new life for future generations to enjoy. If you do plan on coming here, 
I would recommend doing it sooner than later because 2024 is when the reconstruction is supposed to take place and will be looking different than what it does now. It is a relatively safe location. When I say that, there are definitely dangers involved. But there was nothing that made me feel unsafe despite me not liking heights or things like that. There are obvious holes, as I pointed out. You can potentially fall in them. You can cut yourself on sharp, rusty metal. But using common sense goes a long way. You know, don't walk on the catwalk. Don't walk or climb the rusty ladders. Just play it safe. You are exploring at your own risk. But it is a fascinating sight. And I'm glad I got here when I did because although it's going to be great to see it re-altered and utilized as a walking biking trail, this is as close to as its original look that we're going to have. Most of the rails are still here. All the little cannonballs, as I call them, are laying on the ground here that were being carried in the torpedo cars, I think they were called. And this is really easy to get to. It's right off the Great Allegheny Trail, rail trail. You just have to park at a parking spot, walk the trail, and there's a little cutout off the trail. There's a hole in the fence. It's not posted. It's not watched after. People do come here regularly. It is a popular place to get pictures and to explore like we did today. But again, do so at your own risk. Stay within your comfort zone. If you do go outside your comfort zone, well, just be aware there's many, many dangers involved. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video and the information I was able to share with you about the Cary Furnace Hot Metal Bridge, please do two things. Number one, giving a thumbs up is your easiest and best way to show support. And number two, comment down below. Tell me what you enjoyed. Was it the aerial shots? Was it the detailed shots walking through it? Was it the information you learned? Maybe it was all of it. Whatever it is, leave your feedback down below. And like I said, if you want to check out the other train bridge I referenced that I crossed with RJ and Jake, that will be linked down below as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for coming along for today's adventure. And I'm back out. And as always, back on the trail. I'll see you in the next video.